Hello, in today's video, we're going to cover how to configure DXSAS using SAML for authentication with Azure Active Directory as the identity provider. The configuration has two major steps. In step one, we configure Azure Active Directory for the enterprise application and record some information we'll need in step two. And in step two, we actually configure DXSAS to use SAML authentication. For the Azure AD configuration, we'll either create or configure the users and groups that will be assigned to the enterprise application. We'll also create or configure the enterprise application that maps to DXSAS. We'll keep in mind that the authentication is IDP initiated and we will record the information we'll need to use in the DXSAS SAML configuration wizard. In this first part of the walkthrough, we'll cover users and groups. You'll either create or assign an existing user to a group that you want to associate with a DXSAS role, for instance, the tenant administrator or power user. Each of these groups will have a group object ID, which we'll need in the DXSAS configuration wizard. And then I'll also cover some considerations when it comes to the users and groups. So I'm logged in my Azure portal. I've got Azure Active Directory in my shortcuts here, and that's what we're going to navigate to. If for whatever reason it wasn't in your shortcuts, you can just simply search for it. So click, and we're in the default directory. So the minimum configuration we need here is we need to assign a user to a group, which we will then map to a role, the tenant admin role in DXSAS. Thus, you'll have a user that can manage your tenant. Since I've already created the users, I'm just going to create the group here. So I click groups, I click new group. It's a security group and we'll give the group a name. You don't have to, but you can also give it a description. And then create the group. If your group was already created, you could just simply skip to the next step, which would be to add the appropriate users. So click the group. And we want to add members. Before we do that, though, I just want to take note of something. You can see here, the group has an object ID. You want to copy this, so I can copy it manually here, or I can copy it to the clipboard. We're going to use this in the DXSAS SAML configuration wizard. And this is what gets mapped to a role over in DXS. So if I go to members for now, click add members, then I can either search, but I know the member I want to add and he is conveniently named DX admin. So I'll click the user. You could select multiple users, of course, and then click select and the user or users will be added to your group. A couple notes here. Let's take a look at this actual user. So if we drill into it, if you're going to transmit these attributes, they should be filled out. So for instance, if you want to map over on the DXS SAS side, the, um, the given name and the surname, you wanna make sure they're filled out and not blank. So that's first thing. The second thing would be just to be aware of special characters anywhere. Um, the at symbol here will get transformed into a pound and that should be fine, but um, just keep note of that. So that covers the basics of the users and groups. Just as a recap, we simply want a user that is going to be assigned to a group that will then be mapped to a role over in DXSAS. At the minimum, it will be tenant admins, but as you um, expand your configuration, you can uh, set up uh, group to role mappings for things like power users or regular users. In the next section, we'll cover the creation and the configuration of the enterprise application. In the Azure AD enterprise application configuration, we're going to assign users and groups to the enterprise application. We'll cover the steps needed to configure SAML single sign-on with DXSAS and also take note of the values we'll need later in the DXSAS SAML configuration wizard. Before we can configure the enterprise application over in Azure AD, we're going to need some information. And this information is given to you at the end of the DXSAS SAML configuration wizard. 
So you could go ahead and enter bogus values until you get to the end of the wizard, or you can use this cheat sheet to infer it. So um, we're gonna replace the parameter tenant name with my tenant. And when you do this, you would actually replace it with your friendly tenant name. So you can see the identifier, the entity ID will follow this convention, DXI underscore, in our example, my tenant, in your example, whatever your tenant name is. The reply URL, the assertion consumer services URL will follow this format. I'm not gonna read all that out, but other than to point out, replace my tenant with your friendly tenant name and logout URL is gonna follow a similar convention and you can see it right here. So um, go ahead and do that. You might wanna copy it into a notepad or whatever and we'll use all those values in the next step. Back in the Azure portal, we'll create and configure the enterprise application. Before we do so, I just wanted to cover deletion of an existing enterprise app. So click app registrations and select the app you wish to delete and click delete. So once that's done, we will step through the creation and configuration of a new enterprise application. Click Enterprise Applications, click New Application, and select Non-Gallery Application, and give it a name. Click Add. So we're gonna follow steps one and two of this workflow. In step one, we're going to assign the group we had previously created, so click that. And if you click Add User, you'll have the option to add a group as well, which we do here. I have a small trial directory so I can explicitly select my group. You can search for yours as well. You can select multiple groups here, but I'll go with DX admins and click select and finish by clicking assign. So with that done, we'll go to the overview and move on to the next step. We want to select SAML, of course. And we will start with step one of the basic SAML configuration. So if you click the pencil, we can take the values we previously copied in the cheat sheet. And this is the reason I had us delete the existing enterprise application. You can only have one instance of an enterprise application that uses an identifier in the directory. So um, let me go over to my text editor and I'll get the first value, the, the identifier. And this identifies the SP. In this case, it's DXSAS. We'll get the reply URL next. And we'll finish with the logout URL. You can click Save. And when it's done, you can dismiss the dialog and you can close the configuration screen. Click no, I'll test later because we still have to configure DXSAS. And we'll go to user attributes and claims. So this will ensure that the um, proper attributes are being transmitted and being mapped over on the SAS side. So the first thing we want to do is add a group claim. And this identifies um, in the assertion, um, what is the group? And this will be associated with the group object ID, which we'll also send over. So for the group claim, you can select either a security group or a group assigned to the application. I would suggest going with group assigned to the application simply because this will transmit all the groups that a user is a member of and um, it's unnecessary because SAS will be unaware of them anyway. So click save and we're gonna need all of this and you can get it in one of two places. So you can copy it from here and I've already done that in my cheat sheet over here. We got our claims and you can see these map to what we see on this side. So the, uh, the groups, the email address, the given name and the surname. I'll show you where else you can get this. But with that done, let's close this and move on. So the next thing we'll need is the metadata. You can get it um, in section three here and you can either navigate directly to the URL or you can download it. I'm gonna download it and just open it directly in a text editor. So let's do that. Here we go, we got character soup. 
the first thing we'll need, and I've already copied it, is the entity ID. And there's a couple places you can get this, and I'll show you the other place in a second. Um, the first place is in this document, of course, and it's whatever's within this entity entity ID value. If we go back to my cheat sheet, I'm going to close this other window here. If we go back to the cheat sheet, you can see it's already here. It's this thing right here, and I'll just denote it. And we'll move back. The other things we can see here, um, the claims are actually included in the metadata, and that makes sense. So if I look for groups, we see it's here. And this matches what we saw in the, um, the attributes and claims configuration section of the enterprise application. So the other important piece of information we'll need from this is the X59 certificate. It's repeated throughout. It's going to have the same value. So take whatever is within the brackets and paste it elsewhere. The Azure Entity ID is also shown here under Setup DXSAS. Um, in your case, it'd be set up in whatever the name of your enterprise application was. It's the Azure AD identifier. So it's um, this URL that starts with STS. And that's the same thing as we saw in the, um, the metadata XML. The login URL, this is a little confusing. This would be for SP initiated login. So if DXS initiated the login, DXS uses IDP initiated login. So Azure initiates the login. So we get that from the properties of the enterprise application. And it's listed here, the user access URL. So let's copy that and let's paste it somewhere else. And we'll call it the login URL because this is what it's referred to in DXS. So that is the completion of the enterprise application creation and configuration section. Um, we'll move on and we'll configure DXS in the next part. Now that the enterprise application is configured in Azure AD, we can start the SAML wizard over on the DXS side. We'll set up any optional attributes or roles and we'll do some testing of the authentication and take a look at SAML tracer in case you have to troubleshoot. Now that the enterprise application has been created and configured in Azure AD, we can proceed with the SAML configuration wizard over in DXSAS. So I've logged into my tenant, and from the launch pad, I'm going to click the gear for settings and click users, the ellipsis, and then switch the user store authentication to SAML. We click yes to the warning that you can only have one authentication type active. So we do that and we will copy and paste this information. So this is what we gathered from Azure AD. And the first thing we will get is the Azure AD entity ID. And we'll paste it right here. Next, we will get the user access URL, which is the login URL here. And we put it into the IDP login URL field. And then finally, we need the certificate. So let's take that and it's pasted in there. So we can hit next to go to the next screen. And in this screen, we will we'll map the DX attributes to the SAML attributes over in Azure. So roles maps to groups. And I think the rest are fairly straightforward. So email address would be your email. Given name is the first name, and we'll take surname and put it in the last name field. Click next there. The SAML group to be associated with the subtenant admin, this maps to the group object ID for the group we created um, near the beginning of the video. So let's paste that here. And you have the opportunity later to map other group object IDs with other roles in SAML, as we uh, other roles in DX rather, as we had uh, discussed, something like maybe a power user or just a simple regular user. So click next at the screen. And as we had mentioned before, we could have used this when we were configuring the enterprise application. 
Um, but we were able to infer this information and um, that was the PowerPoint slide we saw earlier in the video. The, um, the IDP URL, this is the reply URL. The audience is the entity ID or the identifier and the logout URL is still the logout URL. So you can click save here. And before proceeding, what I would suggest is leaving this tab open. If you if you go somewhere else or maybe you test from another machine, it's helpful because what you can do if it goes sideways is um, just simply hit back on the browser and from the user screen, it's set to SAML right now, you can simply hit delete and it would revert to local. So we're gonna pause the video right now and I'm gonna log in and we'll test the authentication. We'll also take a quick look at SAML Tracer in case there's any issues. All right, now that everything's been configured over in Azure AD and in DXSAS, it's time to test it. Uh, before we do so, I'm gonna use an add-in here, it's free. It's called SAML Tracer and we can use it to analyze what's being transmitted and received but it might also help us troubleshoot if necessary so i'm going to use the user access url the idp initiated login url so put that in our browser we're going to log in this user as a reminder was added to the dx admins group which was assigned to the enterprise application and whose group object id was associated with the tenant admin role so let's try to log in as this user And since it's IDP initiated login, we're going to Microsoft to log in. And what we expect to see is the DXSAS landing page. We see it here. We also see the gear. Two things. Um, that we see this means we're able to log into the system, but that we see this means that the group object ID was correctly received and it was configured correctly to. Um, mapping that object ID with the tenant admin role. So let's just jump over to SAML Tracer again. And what we can do here is you can analyze it. I mean, um, all the gets in the posts. We could also export this. And then open it in something like our text editor. Let's open that. Oops, that one. That is open this one, I believe. Yes, yeah, 706. <laughs> and you could read through this, but I mean, what I would do is this. If you do a control F and search for, and I've already got the search term in there, but it's, you're looking for SAML P. Um, there's two sections, but the section we're looking for is this, and this is everything that's been transmitted in this um, this matches with what we've configured, etc. So I mean, the destination. This is the. Um, this would be the. The reply URL, the um, the assertion consumer services URL. So, um, but other things we might be looking for. You can see each of the claims and then what the value for each claim was. So um, let me get you an example here. Here's a great example. the given name, the surname. So the given name um, in this case is DX. I, I named this user DX, first name, last name, admin. So you can see that this is the claim and then this is the value of the claim. This is the claim or the, um, the attributes rather. But um, one of the important things would be the groups. So you can see here the group attribute is transmitted and then this is the group object ID that was transmitted. So if um, if it looks like it wasn't mapped correctly, you might want to check this. Okay, so if you add other roles, if you map other roles, and let's just take a look at that. Go back to settings, go back to the user configuration, and then down here we can manage SAML defined groups mapped to DXI roles. So if I click that, something I can do. If I wanted to add another group that was a tenant administrator, I'd simply click the plus and then put its object ID in there. Um, I can do the same thing for either of these. So once again, that group object ID is obtained over in Azure, and then you just put it in here with the associated role and you know go ahead and test. I'm gonna cancel this, and that is that. So thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful, and um, check out our channel for more helpful videos.